perfect, what's that word, utopian world where everybody was at least colorblind, if not completely blind. It's a great principle. It's a nice thought. Then there's the reality. And the reality is TSA officers in the airport are trained to hone in on a certain look. And if I want to, believe me, and I say this as an African-American, okay? For a while, when Michael Jordan was winning champion on his fifth or sixth or seventh championship, being a bald black guy was cool. Then Mike Tyson started acting like a nut. And all of a sudden, being a bald black guy had this other connotation in America. <laughs> and so it was no longer cute. And I would feel a difference between me and the guy who maybe presents himself like this all the time in the airport. The reality of me wearing this suit, and let me just be completely honest, I had a gig the day I left to come here. So this is what I wore on the gig. We did a tribute to Art Blakey. I was asked to participate in a panel discussion right, about Art Blakey, my mentor and the jazz messengers. So, it mattered how I looked because I wasn't just representing Ralph Peterson, right? Who you are in this music becomes, after you start to identify with the people who inspire you, you begin to represent them, like it or not, you know? There's an old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Right. So I had to go and sit on a panel with Brian Lynch, who wore a jacket and a Brian Lynch hat, you know, and a, and a sweater, but no tie. And Billy Harper, who I plucked out of the audience, who wasn't even planning on participating. And he had some sort of casual suit on. Ira Gittler, the famous jazz critic, and Steve Ture, who came in a shirt and a jacket, and, you know. Nobody looked like they just pulled up out of their garden and decided they would make the panel discussion. Not that I'm saying that any of you guys do. This is just a topic that I don't think gets talked about around here. I think we teach you a lot about the dots and the chord changes and the time changes and the modes and the, uh, you know, doubly diminished, subdominant, Asia minor, Z flat demolished chord. <laughs> but we don't talk about how to be a professional, like why it's important that if you're asked to do something and you agree to do it and you don't show up at the last minute, how it starts a very dangerous habit of unprofessionalism, right? We got, tonight we got Pavel on the concert, right? And Pavel wasn't my first choice, but he ends up being the best choice because of how professional he is. And that, <laughs> yeah, see, like, when you have good habits, it's not like bending over backwards to do anything or setting yourself on fire. It's just doing the right thing for the right reason. Yeah. Guy says, take a 10 minute break, right? You don't go to the grocery market, right? You come back, you know, and take, at least the 10 minutes you're hanging outside the door, you know what I mean? You're, you're not, oh man, I gotta go home and heat up that pizza from two days ago and eat it. <laughs> so, as educators, we notice these things. 
And as human beings, we're not always perfect in how we respond when you guys respond imperfectly. Okay? So, make sure you don't put us up on a pedestal. First of all, the air is too thin. And once you're up there, you gotta fall. There's no place to come but down, right? So, on the other hand, once I called, I asked Billy Harper to be on this panel. I saw him sitting in the audience. And what was happening was, Ira Gittler was talking about Art Blakey from a standpoint of having seen him with Fletcher Henderson when he was a young man and being the student of Chick Webb, right? Well, Brian and I couldn't speak on that. And then he was talking about, you know, the post... Curtis didn't make it. Curtis Fuller was supposed to make the panel discussion, and he didn't make it down. So they're talking about Freddie and Wayne and Lee and Wayne and Cedar and Wayne and <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Workman and Wayne, right? And Brian and I couldn't really speak firsthand about that either. So I was starting to feel uncomfortable about the whole that's in the panel chronologically. Steve Torrey comes in, and no, Steve Torrey's running a little late. He did the same thing I almost did, because summertime started on Sunday in, in America. So when he woke up, he was an hour behind, because the clocks were set ahead, right? And it almost happened to me, because I was sitting in the living room in my underwear, waiting <laughs> for pancake breakfast, right, for my wife before I... <laughs> And, you know, I set the alarm for 6 o'clock, right? I'm trying to be professional. Suits laid out, bags been packed for two days, right? And one false move can have you panic and then like, oh, moving like that the rest of the day. I looked at the, I looked at the clock on the cable box and it said, 8.15. <laughs> now, based on when I set the alarm and woke up and turned it off, it's supposed to be 7.15. And I'm supposed to have a whole hour and 15 minutes to eat my pancakes take it, and get dressed casually and make it to the train stop. All of a sudden, I got 20 minutes to get in the shower, shave, put my suit on, put my tie on correctly, get the stuff in the car, and get from Weymouth to Boston by 9 o'clock. So it's like, you know, Abbott and Costello meets the Keystone Cops. It's just fun. So uh, I made it because the train was late. The train was late because the same reason I have three inches of water in my basement. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Mm. Um, long story short I called Billy Harper up because I needed to feel more comfortable about not being able to and I needed to recognize that there was some stuff about Art Blakey that I couldn't respond to firsthand, but that there were people in the room who could and part of being professional is understanding what you're good at and not trying to fake as though you're not good at something, right? Because I could come here, for example, I could come here and try to pick up the harmony lessons on the level that David and Don teach. And, you know, if I spent my nights doing the homework before I came in and gave it to you, I could do okay. Because I've had that stuff, but it's not in my wheelhouse where I can spit it back out. But since Brian's not here and Conrad's not here, nobody's talking about Afro-Cuban music anymore. Certainly not Don and David, right? So, in the balance, you, it's important as a professional to find your niche. 
So once Billy came in, I was like, come on in. Like Billy.